Good morning everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta and you're watching Biology Classes. So welcome to all of you in this lecture of Biology. Student, in this lecture, I will continue your chapter number 2 for all my 12 students, also for my BSc students and for the NEET students also. So in this lecture, we will discuss about the types of ovule. In my last video, I described about the structure of ovule and now in this video, I will tell you how many types of, or, of ovules are found in the flowering plants. So before knowing the types of ovule, it is very important to understand why ovules are of different types. Actually, there are three important parts of ovule. The first one is micropyle, that is the opening of the ovule. At the opposite end of micropyle, chalaza is present. So this is the chalaza part, this is the micropyle part and the last is the funicle part. These three important parts are found in the ovule and these all these all these three parts change their position. So on the basis of position of funicle, chalaza and fun micropyle, ovules can be categorized into six types. So these are the six categories of ovules on the basis of position of micropyle, chalaza and funicle. So first of all, I will make a diagram of different kinds of ovule then I will describe each type of ovule. So let's make a diagram. diagram is ready so now i am going to explain all these six types of ovule first of all it is very important to know that all these ovules are categorized into six types on the basis of the position of micropyle chalaza and funicle so these are the three important name i will repeat it again and again this is the micropyle this is stachys funicle while the opposite part of the micropyle is known as chalaza so these are orthotropous number one Anatropus number two, Hemitropus number three, Campylotropus number four, Amphitropus number five, and Circinotropus number six. These are six types of ovule. So one by one, I will describe all the types of ovule. So first one is Orthotropus. This type of ovule is a straight. It means the micropyle, chalaza, and the funicle are present in a straight line. The embryo sac situated in the center and this type of ovule is found in some angiosperm and all the gymnosperm. For example, of an angiosperm is black pepper or piper nigrum, while in gymnosperm different kinds of examples are there such as cycus, pinus, ephedra, all these plants are gymnosperms and these gymnosperms consist of this type of orthotropous ovule. It is a very important question of your all competitive examination that in cycus, cycus is a gymnosperm, in cycus which type of ovule is present? So the correct answer is orthotropus means the ovule is straight, the micropyle chalaza and funicle are present in a center in a straight line. Okay. So this was the orthotropus ovule. Now I would like to tell you about one more thing that is a symbol means this is a line which represent the straight ovule the type of orthotropous ovule which is a straight so this line represent the straight ovule another ovule is anatropous anatropous now suppose that this is the orthotropous ovule and the stalk or the funicle overgrow due to the overgrowth of funicle the ovule will invert and this type of ovule is inverted and this is called as anatropous ovule so this is the symbol of anatropus in which you can see the ovule is inverted due to overgrowth in the funicle. So this is the funicle, this is the micropyle and this is the chalaza. So these are the symbols of MCF which make the diagram easy. So micropyle, chalaza and funicle are not in a straight line in this type of ovule and the ovule is inverted. Okay, the example. Actually, there are 82% angiospermic plants or the flowering plants consist of this type of anatropous ovule, including a family 
asteraceae the old name is compositae while the new name is asteraceae the family asteraceae consists of different kinds of flowers like sunflower marigold jasmine macallia genia pansy daisy different kinds of flowers are included in this family and this is the largest angiospermic family all the plants of this family consist of this type of ovule that is the anatropous ovule and one more important thing that about 82 percent of angiosperms consist of this type of ovule and this is the most important type of ovule most common type of ovule and then the question is asked in the examination that which is the most common type of ovule and the correct answer is the anatropous ovule i made the structure of anatropous ovule because it is very common okay now the next ovule is hemitropous hemitropous is a condition is a mid condition of orthotropous and anatropous suppose that this is the symbol of this ovule when the ovule is straight it is the orthotropous and it is it is inverted it is the anatropous but this is not inverted it makes a right angle the micropyle the chalaza and the funicle produce a right angle of 90 degree so as you can see in this diagram this ovule is transverse and the micropyle chalaza and funicle are situated at the right angle or the 90 degree angle so this is the hemitropous ovule and the example is ranunculus ranunculus is a flower which is very beautiful flower so the ranunculus flower consists of hemitropous type of ovule now the next ovule is campylotropus now what about campylotropus in this type of ovule the ovule curved slightly curved towards the base so this type of ovule is formed and the symbol is like this so it is slightly curved this is the campylotropous ovule the micropyle the chalaza and the funicle are not present in the straight line the ovule is not straight so this type of ovule is termed as the campylotropous ovule and the example of campylotropous ovule is pea and the goose foot goose foot is also known as chenopodium which belongs to family chenopodiaceae so pea and goose foot are the example of campylotropous ovule so this was the fourth type of ovule now the next one is amphitropous ovule again that is the most important name amphitropous ovule and the example is poppy now what about amphitropous ovule this ovule is more curved than the campylotropous ovule now see the difference in both the structures this curve and this curve this is less and this is more curved towards the base so this type of ovule is amphitropous and one another very interesting thing about this ovule is as you can see in all the diagrams the embryo sac which i made with red color is circular or oval shaped in structure but here the embryo sac is not circular it has a different kind of shape and this shape is resembles to the horseshoe on the base of the uh, shoe of the horse there are iron made structures are attached which are known as horseshoes so these horseshoes shape is the ovule the, ov the embryo sac of this type of ovule is horseshoe shape this is the important question for your competitive examination that in which type of ovule the embryo sac becomes horseshoe shaped and the correct answer is the amphitropous ovule so all the cells are similar like all the cells which i told you before i have described all these cells like antipodal cells polar bodies excel synergies i have described all these things in my last video in this video i'm not going to describe these eight cells about the embryo sac but it is important to understand all the cells are similar in all the ovules but the embryo sac becomes horseshoe shaped in case of amphitropous ovule okay so now the last one is the sarcinotropus what about the sarcinotropus ovule sarcinotropus ovule is a very different kind of ovule in which another interesting phenomenon takes place like suppose that uh, this is the straight ovule like orthotropus when the funicle overgrowth takes place then it becomes inverted as an anatropous ovule but funicle again grow continuously then it becomes straight again so firstly initially it is a straight then inverted and again it becomes straight then this type of ovule is termed as the sarcinotropus as you can see this is the straight ovule okay then inverted this is the straight then inverted and again again it is straight 
so this is the symbol straight inverted straight so this is the symbol of sesenotropus which makes easy to understand this ovule so this type of ovule is initially straight then inverted and finally is uh, it becomes straight again so this was the sarcinotrapus ovule and the example of this type of ovule is apantia so these are the types of ovule let's revise the name the orthotropus example black pepper and all the gymnosperm the anatropus the example sunflower and other members of family compositi or asteraceae another one is the hematropus example ranunculus next one is campylotropus example pea and goose food next one is the amphitropus which has embryo sac of different shape like horseshoe shaped example poppy and the last one is sarcinotropus ovule which is also very interesting and different kinds of ovule and the example is apantia so these were the types of ovule in this lecture i told you about all the types of ovule in my next lecture we will talk about the different topics of this chapter so i think all the topics all the content is very clear to you in this video still if you want to ask any question any query any suggestion you may ask in the comment section i will try my best to reply you thanks for watching have a good day